Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna look at something really awesome, and that is the Dell PowerEdge T40. And the reason the Dell PowerEdge T40 is awesome is because, well, it's cheap. And cheap is not a word that we use lightly. Usually we would say something like inexpensive because you can be inexpensive and still provide a good value, but really the Dell PowerEdge T40 is cheap. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. How cheap is this thing? As we just started to film this video, we looked at how much does this thing cost? And it was $669 on Dell's site, which was a lot, but a lot of times these things sell for in the $349 to $400. Frankly, at $669, I don't really see the value prop in this, but if you're at the $339 or $340 range, it totally makes sense. And just to give you an idea of how cheap this thing is, the next Dell server that we're gonna look at is the AMD Epic based. Dell PowerEdge C6525. And the PowerEdge C6525 uses AMD Epic processors. There's a total of eight of them in a 2U system. And what you're actually gonna see there is that the least expensive list price of any CPU that you can put into that system is over $400 or more than we bought this system for. So let's take a look at the Dell PowerEdge. T40. Looking at the front of the Dell PowerEdge T40, one of the nice things is it's really small. It's very compact compared to some of the older generations and things like the higher end T140s and stuff like that that we've reviewed. The other thing that you're going to notice, or at least I thought when I looked at this thing initially was like, hey, isn't that the Dell Precision 3630? Because, well, if you put them side by side, they look almost identical with the kind of difference that the 3630 says that it's a precision model and it has an SD card reader, but they look darn similar. On the front of the unit, you see stuff that you don't normally see in most servers these days. And just a couple examples here. First, there's a front audio port, kind of like you'd find in a workstation, but not like something you'd find in a server. There's also an optical drive bay, we're gonna talk about that in a second. There's an array of USB ports, and so there's even a USB-C port, which is kind of useful as well. But I look back at when was the last time that we reviewed a server with something like a optical drive bay, and it has been a long time on STH. I actually got tired of going back and looking through the archives. It took that, it's been that long since we've actually reviewed a system with an optical bay. So something different. Now, realistically, the Dell PowerEdge T40 comes in a pretty standard configuration these days, and it comes with a Intel Xeon E2224G CPU. So you actually have G, which means you have the GPU built in, you have four cores, four threads. You also get eight gigabytes of memory and a one terabyte, three and a half inch hard drive. When you open the box, you don't necessarily get a lot of stuff in it, but you do get this very handy Dell EMC PowerEdge T40 Quick Start Guide. And of course, we have to take a look at it because it's fun. Now, inside this Quick Start Guide, what we actually get is we get a three-step process to setting up your server. So for all the IT admins out there that are thinking, no, there's actually a lot of steps to setting up server. Nope, not according to Dell. There are three steps and we're gonna go through them right now. Step one, connect the network cable and optional IO devices. So you don't get a network cable with a server, by the way. So, okay, I don't know where you'd find those, but that's, that's possible. Second, you should connect the system to a power source. Seems reasonable, you do get a power cable though. Third, not kidding, turn on the system. And that is the quick start guide in its entirety. Flipping the system around to the back of the system, you can see what is frankly a pretty standard workstation configuration. You get some nice legacy IO port options, like you get serial console cable, you get PS2 ports. I mean, you got a, you know some legacy stuff there. You get a nice array of a total of six USB ports. You have USB 3 back there. And you also have two display ports. Those two display ports are driven by the Intel Xeon eCPU, and so, that's how you get 4K output from your server. Something else that you're gonna notice on the back of the server is that you actually have some nice little latches that are really easy to remove. And it's not just a simple set of screws or anything like that. You can actually get into the system without having to remove a single screw. That's really cool. You push on the little latch and boom, the side panel comes off. And when we look at the side panel, we get to see something that's kind of fun. We actually get a really nice little service information guide. And you might ask, well, why do we even care about a service information guide? Well, if you direct your attention to the bottom corner, what we actually have here is a optical drive removal information. So if you wanna remove that optical drive that we saw on the front of the system, 
they actually have a guide for it, which makes you just kind of wonder, hey guys, it's 2020, why don't we just say, make the system a little bit less expensive and then anybody that needs an optical drive just go buy a USB one. I don't know, but instead we have an optical drive and we have the guide in terms of how to change it. Another really interesting feature of the PowerHT 40 is the fact that the power supply is on an entire arm assembly that you de-latch and unsecure from the back of the system, but you can actually hinge this entire thing out. And so if you wanna to get to the motherboard, you wanna to get to the CPU memory slots, all that kind of stuff, you actually just pull the power supply out on this hinge, which is totally crazy, but that's the way that we're doing things, I guess, in 2020. And you open this up, it's super nice, and you get access to the rest of the system. Now, this is not something in a, if you built your own system at the 350-ish dollar range, you would not get a feature like this. This is totally kind of unique to Dell and just the fact that they are leveraging one of their workstation chassis for the server means that you get some kind of cool little feature like this. Now that power supply, just gonna talk about that real quick because in the Dell Precision 3630, that is a 300 watt unit just like here. But in the precision model, you actually get a 300 watt, 80 plus gold power supply in the PowerEdge T40. Dell said, mm, don't need to be that green on the server side. So we're gonna actually just give you an 80 plus bronze power supply. Underneath the power supply, you're gonna see the Xeon E 2200 series CPU, but you'll also see four DIMM slots. So this takes it to four DIMMs and the official memory support list says that you can go up to 16 gigabyte DIMMs. Now you get one eight gig DIMM installed, but you can put up to four 16 gig DIMMs for 64 gigabytes of memory. Now, just a quick one here. Technically, the Xeon E2200 series platform supports 32 gig unbuffered DIMMs. Make sure they're not registered. So you will see platforms based on this chip and chipset that will take up to 128 gigabytes of memory, but Dell only validates up to 64 gigabytes of this platform. And just to give you some sense of how big this CPU is, this is cost more than half of the entire server just to get that CPU. One of the strengths of the Dell PowerEdge T40 is its PCIe expansion. And you actually get a PCIe by 16 slot, you get two by four slots, and then you get this white slot. And for anybody that doesn't know what that is, you probably have to be a, of a certain age, maybe have some gray hairs like I do, and you have to know that that's actually a 32-bit PCIe slot. Sorry. PCI slot, because even in 2020, we still have servers that are using something from 2000. The reason for this is usually that there are some customers that have to have a PCI slot for whatever reason, but that's what it is. There's one other unique feature in this that is a little different than most of the other PowerEdge range. And so if you look at the system, what you're gonna notice is that there's no iDRAC controller on here. This system does not have a baseboard management controller like every other PowerEdge system. That means that some of the telemetry data, some of the out-of-band management, a lot of the stuff that you get that's very nice with the iDRAC solution, you do not have in this PowerEdge T40. For a lot of organizations, that is a big deal. And if we look from a competitive perspective, the HP ProLiant Microserver Gen 10 did not have a ILO controller, which is kind of HP's version of their baseboard management controller, but the Gen 10 Plus, now we did a review on that, so you can go check it out. We also have a customization guide on that system. You can go check out the HP ProLiant Gen 10 Plus, but that actually added HPE ILO to the mix because HPE said, hey, our customers really want that manageability across our range, even at the edge, which is kind of the same spot that the T40 would play in. And without the BMC, it is a power edge, it's called a power edge, but at the end of the day, this is really kind of a lot more like a consumer workstation platform than it is a server. That also means that you only have one, one gigabit network port in the back, which on a low cost platform like this is pretty common, but at the same time, a lot of people will want multiple NICs, and so maybe you use those PCIe expansion slots for additional NICs. Let's talk storage for a second. Now there is an M2 slot on the motherboard, so you can see that. And the other thing that you have is you have four SATA ports. Now the first SATA port, or second SATA port actually, but you have two SATA ports that are basically populated when you get the system pre-configured. And the first one is going to the optical drive bay. The second one is going to the one terabyte hard drive that this comes with. The one terabyte hard drive actually installs very easily in a nice blue carrier, and it is not hot swap, which is a big factor for some folks. You cannot hot swap this, so you actually have to bring the system down, plug in the drive, and then bring it back up. And that's 
important if you have to go do some field service. Well, with such a large chassis, Dell managed to find space for not just that single drive, but you can put two more drives. So at the bottom of the chassis, there are additional spots for three and a half inch drive bays. And one thing that we really think that needs to get fixed ASAP on this line is that the systems do not come, or at least when we bought ours, did not come with the additional blue hard drive carriers. And what that means is if you want to go add, say, two more hard drives to the system, get three hard drives total, you have to go source those blue carriers. That is absolute ridiculous. These systems are designed for the edge, they're designed for not necessarily the wealthiest markets or whatever. And so asking people that are in the SMB space or, or consumers to go out and find specific carriers is just a total pain. They're made out of plastic, they're not expensive relative to the rest of the system, they should be included. But let's take the comparison view of this too. And so if you look at the HPE ProLiant Microserver Gen 10 Plus, you get maybe not carriers, but you get all the mounting pegs for all four drives. So even though the Microserver Gen 10 Plus is much more compact and it has features like quad port NICs and all that kind of stuff, you actually get more storage even in the considerably more compact form factor and including the power supply as well. And that's kind of strange. If you think about it, the PowerHT40 is designed to compete head to head with that HP system, so I don't know. Something that's really nice with this is that the Xeon E2200 series actually performs pretty darn well. You get nice clock speeds out of it. And so this may not be the fastest processor in the world, but you do get some pretty significant performance. Also, because you have the integrated GPU, if you have to do transcoding, you can look up the Intel 630 GPU and you can kind of look at what features that has and if it's supported in whatever software that you're using, you can go check that out. The other thing that you want to check out for software support is that the NIC is an Intel i219 LM based. So it's a built in NIC. And so you can look up your compatibility with that if you want to go run a virtualization solution or whatever kind of software you want. Now, my Microsoft Windows Server 2019, 2016 are the official supporting Windows operating systems or supported operating systems. And you also have Ubuntu and that's it. So if you want to run something outside of those, then, well, you should probably go look up what the hardware is. Another thing that we want to look at real quick is just in terms of Project Tiny Mini Micro. Now, if you are running this system in a single drive configuration, you just need a GPU or you just need you know, the onboard GPU and that's kind of really what you're focused on. You don't really need the CPU performance or maybe you just want lower power or whatever it is. The Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes actually offer a much more consolidated package. We actually looked at the Dell Optiplex 3070 micro, which is a great system. You can put a hard drive, plus you can put an NVMe SSD in it so you can get some storage kind of similar to this. Maybe it's a little bit less. You don't get the three and a half inch storage, but at the same time, you know, it's a really easy package. It's about the same cost. On the subject of power consumption, it's actually really not too bad because you don't have the iDRAC management controller, which would take say six watts. And these types of systems tend to spend a lot of time at idle. And because they spend a lot of time at idle, you tend to see that you know, the baseboard management controller can take up a third of the idle power consumption in a system like this. And so not having that BMC really helps on the idle side. Now, when you do load up the system, you can get some pretty significant power consumption. We got around 100 watts in our system, but you know, there's some room to go up and down in terms of what you can do there, but just kind of give you some kind of range. This is a 71 watt TDP CPU, which is pretty significant. So wrapping this entire thing up, if you look at the Dell PowerEdge T40, it is cheap. And in some cases, that's actually a good thing because sometimes you just want the lowest cost server possible. And that is the entire value proposition of the PowerEdge T40. It is a cheap node. If you want a baseboard management controller, get something else. If you want more onboard networking, get something else. If you want to go over three, three and a half inch drives, well, get something else. If you want lower power, get something else. I mean, there's a whole lot of reasons to get other things, but at $350 to $400, this thing can actually make a lot of sense. The entire package from Dell when it is on sale is actually less costly than going out and building your own system of new parts. So that's really cool. And hey, if you made it this far, why don't you click subscribe, turn on those notifications. So that way, you know, whenever we come out with a new video. Now we already mentioned the Dell PowerEdge C6525. We also are doing this project, Tiny Mini Micro, which I think is super exciting. Check out the STH main site. And overall, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.